Rick, Rick Van Neuenheiser, Contango Ore, how are you? I'm doing good. Good, congratulations, you just poured gold. We, uh, we just poured gold, actually I wasn't here on Monday because I was holding the bar of gold in my hands. And uh, from our Moncho project, which we joint ventured with Kinross. So yeah. we, we found a million ounce deposit, we joint ventured with Kinross because they have an existing mill that has had excess capacity. And so uh, we took a shortcut to production. Um, as you know, in today's world, it, probably would take five to 10 years to permit a new Easy. mine. Easy, yeah. And they, they say on average it takes 15 plus to, right. you know, from discovery to production. Um, and so we kind of, we, we, we figured out a shortcut to the Lausanne curve and- uh, <laughs> Right, yeah. And, and, and it's worked. And um, so it's actually a, a business model that we're, we're going to work, continue to work on and continue to try to perfect, but uh, looking at other projects that kind of fit that same mold. It's high grade, near infrastructure, and relatively simple from a permitting standpoint. I mean, nothing's easy, right? nothing is simple, simple, but on a relative basis, if you're above the water table, i.e. a mine on top of a hill is a good good starting place, and that's what Moncho is. So that's, how we're, that's what our, our business plan is, is to execute on that. Okay, so work me through the yep. business model, then how is this different than everybody else, and how did you get producing so quick? So you know, basically the model is focus on quality and don't get all worked up about trying to find a 5, 10, 20 million ounce gold deposit, uh, which is most of what the junior speculative market is selling to, to right. investors. You know, we're going to find, you know, get leverage to gold and have you know, leverage to lots of gold. And, and you know, they talk about half, half a gram being you know, high grade or gram being high grade, and like that's not high grade. Right. Um, and yeah, it gives you leverage to gold, but you know, you might just be leveraged to bag of nothing. Mm -hmm. So we're focused on things that we can get into production quickly, um, relatively quickly, mm -hmm. uh, which means it's got to be a relatively simple ore body. It's got to be near near infrastructure. It has to have a grade sufficient to be able to pay for the transport to the existing mill facility, mm -hmm. um, and which ours is. Uh, Mancho is 240 miles by truck, by highway. The highway's right there, so uh, we had to build a road connecting us to the highway, but that was, it was an 18-mile road, 6% um, grade, because you have to have a, you know, truck haulable road. Right. So we did all that, and uh, we formed the joint venture in 2020, in September 2020 with Kinross, and took us uh, about a year to complete a feasibility study on the on the on that plan okay so mine there and transport the ore and process and that's pretty mill. standard no that's fairly standard yeah. you know you can get you can get the work engineering and you know work done to a 12 18 to a high months. level yeah. yeah 12 months took us a year to permit that's um, really quick because it was just a mine it's just a quarry operation and okay. as I said it's on top of a hill so you don't have a lot of water to worry about mm -hmm. you still have to you know there's still stuff to worry about and yeah. still things to have to plan around but it's it's a lot easier permitting a mine at the top of a hill than it is at the bottom of a river valley. Yeah. So water is always the, yep. the sort of the worst enemy of a mine. It either got too much or not enough. Right. Um, so from a, again, from a permitting standpoint, Moncho was relatively easy. We had a minimal impact on wetlands. Mm -hmm. um, we were just over the five acre threshold that triggers NEPA, the National Environmental Policy Act review. Mm -hmm. um, but we, you know, we did go through a NEPA process uh, mm -hmm. for the mine. Took. Uh, a little less than a year from start to finish, official start to finish. That is, is so fast. Which is quick yeah. in today's world. And it's quick because we didn't try to permit a tailings facility and a mill and a power plant. Mm -hmm. That would have taken five years At plus. least, yeah. So you said you want to take this model to what? To where? Do you have other properties then? or? Yes, yeah, so we have two other um, high, um, properties that fit that model. Um, we have in, in naming that we have a high quality resource. Uh, Lucky Shot has a, we have a, a, a 14, 15 gram uh, high grade underground resource identified. It's small right now, it's only 100,000 ounces, but we've got all the underground developed. We're fully permitted for mining. Okay. So uh, we've, we're underground now and we've put the drifts in to be able to do the detailed drilling to, uh, to define a larger resource. Our objective is to outline about three, 400,000 ounces. Um, and put a mine plan around that, you know, in that 12 to 15 gram kind of average grade. Um, and again, we're all permitted, so if we put rocks in the box and, and haul them up to Fort Knox, you know, we're in business. 
Right. Um, so again, that one's fully permitted. So yeah, we have the railroad there, which is a uh, which reduces costs. Obviously, rail is a lot cheaper than trucking. About yep. a third the cost of trucking. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, uh, again, it's you know, it's relatively low capital to get into production, and it's relatively um, low um, low environmental risk. Is well, there is you know we're fully permitted already. So yeah. you know, no no project is ever without any risk. But um, you know we look at ways to uh, the quality of the deposit and the, and the proximity to uh, infrastructure. The other one, the next one up would be Johnson Track, which we just actually closed on the transaction today. We've uh, officially Congratulations. acquired uh, High Gold mm-hmm. in a um, uh, 100% acquisition. So it's now a subsidiary of, of Contango. Um, and where's that at? So it's also in Alaska. It's, uh, we always do this in Alaska, right? Right. So Anchorage is, you know, down here. We're just kind of opposite when you're in Anchorage downtown looking across the inlet. Yep. That's Susitna, you just look a little further south and that's where the Johnson Track project is. Okay. We're about 10 miles from the coast. Okay. So there's our infrastructure. The, right. The, the marine you can just highway. barge it. So um, we're on private land owned by Siri and that's another important criteria. We work on private land, uh, either private patented claims uh, or uh, land that's owned by an Alaska Native Corporation or tribe or state land. We do not work on federal land. It's okay. just too big of a pain in the butt. Right. Uh, okay. So let's talk about that. Um, Native corporations, which is typically they're very friendly, being from Alaska myself, very friendly to natural resource companies such as yourself that want to develop the land. Or you work only on state land or private land, which is also to very friendly to people like yourself that are developing the that land. That helps with the whole permitting aspect. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what's the grand plan is just to keep on taking this model in Alaska, if you would, gobbling it up? There's other opportunities in Alaska, but you know, we, we don't see this as limited to Alaska. Um, sure. Certainly, we know uh, BC and the Yukon really well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know Yukon's going to be on hold for a little bit and, until things get sorted out with Victoria. But, uh, yeah. um, but in BC, there's lots of opportunities. We've worked with BC. I, I, think, I think the model applies. It's kind of the hub and spoke model anywhere there's a, a mill yeah if there are, are, are opportunities around those mills for uh, exploration properties that have to meet, meet the criteria yeah you know so things that are above the water table are helpful um, things that are really close to infrastructure is, is helpful and obviously grade can pay for you know if you're not as close to infrastructure if you get a little better grade you can pay to build that infrastructure like we did at Moncho we, we just built an 18 mile highway or mm-hmm. road, uh, road roadway to the highway Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I mean, we see this. We see this as a, a a model we can apply elsewhere. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna kind of stick to our backyard. But I'd say, you know, Alaska, Yukon, BC, that's our backyard. North northwest area. Yeah, yeah. Not and there's, you know, there's there's plenty of mills around there that are uh, that have excess capacity. So, and the other thing I think you keep in mind, if you have a mill that's that's processing five gram per ton grade from a resource that they've defined. If we come to them with Johnson Track that's got 10 gram, there's a business transaction to be done. There. Right. Why would they say no? Yeah. Why yeah. would you say no? Right. 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 So uh, that's it's just it's kind of a common sense model. I'm, I'm I I don't think we're the first ones to do it, but I we're I think it's just different from what everybody else is mostly selling, which is you know I've got a gold deposit and we're going to make it bigger and you know we're going to develop it. It's just a really tough. Uh, road to be an explorer and to make that transition to a producer. It is not easy. It's not easy and it takes time. It takes minimally five to ten years, I would say, and that's minimally, if not ten to fifteen years more than likely. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, the people who write about this stuff are saying, saying it's fifteen years from discovery hole to production. To pouring. On average. Yeah, yeah. And no. many and Lots and lots of capital to raise, and which is lots and lots of equity dilution to shareholders. Yes. And I think that's the advantage that we have right now is uh, that we have 12 million shares outstanding. We're NYC, How many? 12 million. 12 million, okay. We're NYC American listed. So, uh, so you're just traded we're, we're, on the New York Stock Exchange? Yeah, we're not a Canadian junior. Okay. We're US, we're US based. We're our, our home base, our mm-hmm. head office is in Fairbanks, Alaska. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, you know, so we get a lot of you know support from uh, from Alaskans yeah. for our business plan because it's based in Fairbanks. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, 
Well, that was another thing. It's like you're traded on the New York Stock Exchange, so you have to comply with all the regulations and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and there's, there's plenty of those, and sure. you, know, you hire the right people to make sure you fill out the paperwork correctly. But uh, <laughs> I mean, that, you know, having a good CFO is a is a is a key part of that. Yeah, yeah. I think the the other thing is that's a little different with our our business model is I, I liken it to more like the royalty companies in that what are they what's the characteristic of a royalty company is they just don't have a lot of people. Right. Right. And royalty companies will tell you that they don't have operational risk. I don't think that's exactly honest. I think. They don't have control of the operational risk. The operator right. has control of the risk and there's sure as hell a risk there. Right. So um, we have a say in the operations because we're an equity owner in the in the operations. So we right. have some say. We don't have control because the manager, Kinra, in, in the case of Mancho, it's Kinross. Right. And we're kind of happy with that because they know what they're doing. Right. They've operated the Fort Knox mill for 30 years. I haven't. Yeah. So I'm happy to say, hey, you, you know, the 700 people that you employ, dealing with, to, yeah. you, you manage those 700 people. We'll pay you a yeah. fee for that. That's the, you know, the tolling arrangement. We'll pay you to yeah. make sure that all runs smoothly. And, and they're obviously incentivized because they own 70%. So we're kind of on the same team, right? Right. And that, so that, that's what's a little different with the, with the business model. I, I liken it more to a royalty company. Mm -hmm. Because we, we don't really want to be the operator. Right. Um, I'm happy to give up. I'd like to, you know, ideally, we, we didn't start with 100% of, uh, of Mancho. We only had 60. Mm -hmm. So um, if, if we had started, we would have done it more like a 50-50. Right. Right. Um, and so I, I think, you know, our future project, my Lucky Shot and, uh, uh, and Johnson Track, I would look more to that sort of a model, which is what I've kind of done in the past with Nova Gold. You know, we, when I started Nova Gold, I started in my basement. We grew it to a $2 billion company. Mm -hmm. um, and we did a 50-50 partnership with, with Barrett. We found one of the biggest gold deposits in the world, which was fun and kind of a blessing in some ways, but it's still not in production. Right. Why? Because it's in the middle of nowhere, and it's, you know, I don't know what the capital costs. It's probably close to $10 billion. Yeah. And those are hard. They, yep. They're even hard for Barrett. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So we don't want to do that again. I mean, I, I would love to find another $40 million, or $40 million ounce deposit, but I'd, I'd prefer if it was next to the highway. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you and me both. Well, Rick, um, tell us where people, if they want to invest with you, give us your uh, where you're traded and your ticker symbol. Sure, and so also, the, to be, uh, if they want more uh, info on your company, how do they do that? Perfect. So, um, CTGO is the trading symbol. NYC American, so NYC-A uh, is the trading platform. Um, and then our website, uh, www.contango.org. Dot com. So it looks a little weird when you write it because there's two O's next to each other and spell check never likes that. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> well, I will put all of this in the show notes below as well as on the, uh, the show notes in Spotify and Apple. Rick, I want to thank you so much. Uh, quite the compelling story. Pleasure and a good meet a fellow, fellow Alaskan here in, uh, in Florida. So. Yeah, great. <laughs> Pleasure. Take care. <laughs>